episode 127, Red Leaf Retrocast. I'm JD. It is my theme pick today. We're doing farming. Does that get your that get your panties in a bunch, guys? Or are you rock hard? I had a blast. You had a blast <laughs> doing some farming simulators? <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> Colin, you're Canadian. There's lots of farming. Naturally, you uh, you loved it. You wore even flannel, uh, the Canadian tuxedo, playing both these games, right? You yeah. wish. Yeah. I, well, you telling me no? Did no, you do I didn't. That? Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right. So, yeah, that's my theme pick today, uh, mostly because I, so <laughs> I guess it stems from, I think it was the Nintendo Direct a few months ago. In which there was like a million farming game announcements and one a uh, few games are being remade and there was a big meme about uh farming simulator is going to be the uh, biggest hit of the year and steam's farming simulator was gonna <laughs> go into record profits and that got me thinking you know what there is a game on there that i have in my collection that i'd never really dove into before and then there was a series and it's being remade uh for a couple of them plus a new game that has always piqued my interest uh, uh for one particular kind of game mechanic so i'm like all right it's the end of the year we kind of maybe it's not the best time to go into like a deep rpg or a deep action game we're kind of all, all doing that we're busy with the holidays kind of situation maybe maybe working and the end of quarter year uh, stuff is happening maybe you just got promoted like i did and you got a lot more responsibilities who knows but simple little farming game and see what happens and then out of nowhere <laughs> i'd totally forgotten the game awards happened so i was very curious this year over how the game awards were going to pan out and it wasn't so much like what games were nominated or didn't win things there was just a couple things that kind of made my ears perk up and go interesting and you guys didn't okay. even know the game awards happened at all right correct Found a lot going on in my life i knew it happened from diablo streamers who are excited to get a diablo 4 announcement so they had to watch the streams oh god that's the only reason i knew it was happening yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely a big show, and there was a lot of reveals and announcements and cool little perks. It looked it looked to me my takeaway from at least that aspect was it sure looks like gaming companies are kind of back in full swing post COVID. It really gets me more excited for twenty twenty three and what's going to happen in the gaming industry and what's going to come out this year with the game with how the game awards panned out. It really got me looking at, I guess, three aspects over what went down. And that was the severe lack of Nintendo first parties that came out in 2022. Uh, Splatoon okay. 3 did come out this year, but as we could see, it, it, didn't, it didn't even win Best Family Game, which is usually a Nintendo category, right? Yeah. Yeah, that that got uh, Kirby in the Forgotten Land. I don't really get why, but I mean that was the Nintendo category, and that's just where uh, what went down there. And then the best action game was Bayonetta three, but the nominees were very weak, I would say, with Call of Duty, Modern Warfare two, Neon White, Sifu, and the TMNT Shredder's Revenge game. So a weak category. Compared to years past, I don't know. Yahtzee had good things to say about Neon White. That's the and that's he's... like the first person kind of collecting cards, and that gets your power ups, right? I yeah, think but that's it's that game. sort of, it's sort of like uh, it's like high high act, uh, it's like high speed, sort of like Mirror's Edge type thing. And Yahtzee actually really liked it. So, <laughs> given how hard he is to please, I think that's that says a lot. Okay. And then from there, it was just kind of a cleanup of God of War and Elden Ring. Yeah, I saw that. I'm looking at the, the winner list right now. 
IGN. Yeah, it was it was it was almost like they just split all the most important awards between the two and uh Game of the Year was Elden Ring. Uh, it's f- <laughs> fair to say that God of War got second place. And then Elden Ring got game direction, God of War got narrative, Elden Ring got art direction, God of War got score and music and audio design. Uh performance was God of War. <laughs> you know. So it was like flip a coin between which one's going to win that year, but um yet another year where Horizon game comes out the same day as like a big <laughs> A big first party studio. The the last time it was Zelda, this time is Elden Ring. And that was my that was my that was my one big takeaway was Horizon, which I, I enjoyed. I know Joey, you uh kind of stopped playing it. You don't you don't like it. You can go into that in a second here. But Horizon won nothing. It was nominated for all these categories, but didn't come close to winning like anything. And that was a big takeaway. Uh, that I took. I guess it just didn't live up to the first game and didn't get the big... um, It didn't get the big groundswell of support that God of War and Elden Ring had. Oh, so maybe, those two are some pretty stiff competition. It is stiff competition, but I think that also says that uh, Horizon has a little bit more work to do in certain aspects to kind of put it over the edge and maybe come up with a different release date. <laughs> maybe that could help. Yeah. <laughs> but what category did you think they even had a chance at against those two? Uh, I would definitely say art direction. I think I think it, it could have won that. Uh, I love the score and music, but it wasn't even nominated for that one. Yeah, I um, guess our direction could be, but I mean, I I think I I love the art and game direction of Forbidden West and the like audio designs, all that. I think the narrative is lacking, and I don't think it should have won Game of the Year. I don't. It's 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 kind of the other aspects of the game that I think it excelled at. It wasn't even up for score and music, so I guess they didn't even think they had a chance. No, no. <laughs> That's how I felt about it. Uh, I'm again. I've I haven't picked it up in in months because of the move and buying a house and that kind of thing. But uh, my other takeaway was the Nintendo first parties. They it, they didn't really have a successful year in that aspect. I know Bayonetta three came out. I realized that that had its own like brief controversy uh, that we mentioned on this podcast that that got that got debunked. And Kirby wasn't a massive success, as far as I can tell, unless someone wants to point me towards other uh, data. And it's it just seems like Mario Rabbids came out. It just seems that Nintendo kind of coasted through 2022, uh, briefly enough, until 23 is rolling around. I find it funny that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was nominated in Game of the Year, but nowhere else. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, right? And like I knew when C- Chronicles Three was coming out, that this game was going to be overhyped by the audience that is obsessed with the Xenoblade series, but uh-huh. it did. It just did not. Im- uh, Hello. Many You're of the criticisms out. that crippled the second game. Chronicles 3. I didn't hear half of that. You cut out. I realize that. (laughs) But yeah, Chronicles 3, not not a um, not the massive success I think they anticipated it to be. Oh, never mind. It was also nominated in Best RPG. But the the point the point stands. (laughs) That's like that's like Gran Turismo 7 winning best racing game. Name another one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but do you guys notice any big omission from the game awards this year? Uh, not really. I mean, I guess I'm a little disappointed Freedom Planet didn't show up anywhere, but mm-hmm. that showed up late in the year, so. Well, take a step yes. back and take a broader perspective. Okay, I'll tell you. Where's the Xbox first party? 
Where's the Xbox at all? I mean, do they have any games? <laughs> My point. My point exactly. PlayStation 5 doesn't really have a lot of games either, but they just have a little more. But they're, they had some good games that came out. So Well, I mean, I look at this game of the year list. Elden Ring on PS5. Plague Tale Requiem on PS5. God of War Ragnarok, PS5. Forbidden West, PS5. Stray, PS5. Well, Elden Ring on Xbox, so that can that just it is kills your and Stray. Pretty sure it's on Xbox too. It is, but no first party. I, I think Plague Tale is also on Xbox. Yeah, but I don't know. Does is Xbox actually going to be doing first party? They bought all those companies to be first party. Yeah, but so many of those games are also on PC and such. So. Yeah, I don't think they're. I don't. I think they realize that they can make more money if they just have the games everywhere. They're just using the Xbox as a tool for you to be able to play in front of your TV. Yeah, I, 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 re- I realize the strategy behind it, but there certainly is something to be said about a good first-party game and being the reason to get your proprietary console or PC even that can handle these games. Just something I noticed. Gotcha. Yeah. Are there any announcements that stood out to either of you guys? Oh, let's see. Um, I mean, it was really all the things that I'm still interested in. Like, I still want to know how Forspoken is going to come out and perform as... I saw the Castlevania Dead Cells DLC. I was like, oh. <laughs> Might have to, might have to do that. Yeah, yeah, I'm interested in that one too. I mean, it says there's even going to be like remixed uh, tracks from the Castlevania series in there. So and that's on top of all like the new levels and weapons and all that good stuff. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, Hades too. What was that? <clears throat> Hades too. That's oh, I cool. missed that one. Yeah, that one was announced. Um, ooh, Armored Core. Down yes, Armored Core 6. Very I curious. They still made Armored Cores. Uh, uh, death. Oh. They haven't made an Armored Core in quite a while. I think From Software is making this one. That's what made, made the new Armored Core super interesting. Yeah, it's From Software. Yeah. And so Death Stranding. Death, Death Stranding, Stranding 2, 2 yes. <laughs> As we've all tried to spit it out. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah, according to this, uh, Hideo Kojima had actually had actually written up a whole storyline prior to 2020, and then after the whole pandemic, he, <laughs> he rewrote the whole thing from scratch. So, I guess that's why it <laughs> Took as long, took this long, and then this. There's this new Suicide Squad game that looks like it's going to be the last, the last thing Kevin Conroy ever voiced Batman for. Rest in peace. Oh, that's yeah. You're right. Uh, I think I think that's kind of it. I did see Crash Team oh, Rumble, uh, but there's a new game coming from the creators of Celeste. It's called Earthblade. I'm interested in that. Earthblade. All right. Clicking on that. I didn't see that. There's a new Horizon game coming out next year? No, it's a it's a VR. Version. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nothing to worry about there. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I, did, I did like the Game Awards this year. I thought it was presented much better. Uh, they tried to hit you with as much things as possible to get you at least excited about gaming again. And I just found the awards in general pretty interesting just from my own kind of critical perspective. Uh, yeah. I was excited about Diablo 4 until I saw they were doing uh, battle passes. Oh, yeah, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. Um, I think Crash Team Rumble is like a Mario Party or is it like Crash Bash? I'm trying to figure that out. 
Uh, Team-based 4v4 multiplayer online battle arena. Oh, okay. Now I've lost all interest. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Figured that out. And uh, looks like Ken Levine is coming out with a new game called Judas. If it, and for those who have forgotten, he's Since the guy the who made Bioshock. <laughs> okay. Joey, you have stopped playing Horizon Forbidden West. Why? Yes, it's just not fun. Like, it feels worse than the first game, which sucks because I want to stick with the story. So even turn down the difficulty all the way down the story just so I'm like, maybe I can blast through the the gameplay and just get the story out. And I still couldn't even do that. It just, I don't know why it just feels worse. It just doesn't feel as fun as the first game to me. Well, I, I I, like, I don't disagree. I, I don't think it's as good as the first game. I think there's aspects that they do better, but when it comes to the mechanics, I mean, you remember my whole diatribe, Colin, when the game first came out, and maybe you do too as well, Joey, but like just certain weapons just don't work the way they're supposed to. Yeah, just yeah, you're saying feel off. Yeah, and and so it really limits you, and you don't have like the gameplay. I felt like I had a lot of freedom in the first game, and in the second game, we always say when we review sequels or criticize sequels of of games in general. We want to see, at the very least, the same game, like, as a minimum. And then the other minimum criteria, criteria is innovate something into it that's, a, that's better, a, even a little better. That way we have yeah. something to actually, like, invest into. And I feel like things like the grappling hook system, the... It seems like a waste of time to me. Most of the time it's oh, like, yeah. hey, stop here for a second to pull off a little tiny piece of metal so you can keep jumping. Like, it just feels like they're just trying to slow me down yeah and then i mean there's they enter introduce more puzzles in the battles i'm not like i kind of get it but again it's like the one weapon where you gotta lay the mine and then shoot the mine things just never work out the way they're meant to and that's that's a big detractor from my exploration in the game so i'm kind of more there for the story and I just feel more limited. Uh, I do still really love it, and I love the world, and I love the art, and all those aspects of the game, but I, I don't think it's as good as the first one. Yeah, just, it's not enough, so I'll probably just watch someone play and get the story. <clears throat> and hopefully they make the third one better, but I don't know, it just feels off, and just weird. I don't, and I feel like I'm being punished for going full sneaky. Like, I put all my stats into being sneaky because in the first game that's what I like to do but so far in the missions none of that has helped me and it feels like I'm more weak I should have just went warrior in the beginning just to get I noticed through the story that too. missions I noticed that too because I, I liked being sneaky in the first one and picking off a robot from a distance yeah yeah but it hitting its weak like... points and, that, and then when you are inevitably finally caught you only have like two left that are coming at you that kind of deal and this one it's just yeah. it's much more action oriented and I don't think they handled it as well. Yeah, so that might be like if maybe if I went full stats into Warrior or whatever, it might be more enjoyable. But I don't want to play that way, and I feel like I'm being forced to play that way. Yeah, I felt I felt the same way. Yeah, it's it's um, it's forcing you to play like an action game, and maybe you don't want to play that way. Yeah, it's 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 much more uh, limited, uh, limited like England's offense against France. Am I right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? They, they can only score with PKs. <laughs> a strategy of penalty kicks won't win you a World Cup? No way. I can't believe it. Hey, but Morocco. <laughs> but Morocco, Morocco, though. How about Morocco, though? <laughs> <laughs> that is an awesome story. I love it. I love I've been that. a fan ever since last Saturday. After I've been a fan US. of Morocco since the World Cup started. Thank you. Since the U.S. got knocked out, full-on Morocco fan. <laughs> uh, I know Colin very much into the World Cup. He knows exactly everything that's going on. So exciting. So exciting. Hey, Morocco only has one goal against them, and they scored it on themselves. Yes, so. 
Exactly. Uh, the only people that can score against Morocco are themselves. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great. Uh, as for games I've been playing, sorry, uh, podcast games. I played the two. That was it. I got I got uh, no update for this podcast, unfortunately. Colin, how about you? About the same, though, mainly bro force again i don't know why i'm so hooked on that one so i got the furthest i've ever gotten in iron bro mode facing off against a giant xenomorph in the wall that blasts you back with bad breath and then occasionally the little mouth tongue inside will spew acid at you that makes it extra hard because it's really hard to avoid and then, oh, I uh, I finally beat Blaster Master Zero. Oh, satisfying? Yeah, I'd say it was above average overall. Mm. Didn't knock my socks off, but it didn't bore or annoy me, so definitely not a waste of time to play. Well, that's good. That's good, at least. Yeah. Now I just need a new toilet game. <laughs> a new toilet game. That's a description. <laughs> yeah. But we'll get to that. I mean, I've had a lot going on these past couple of weeks. I mean, I was catching up on housework all this week and at a movie night with my brother's family last night. We watched The Lion King. The boys really enjoyed that one. And the week before that, we had Dutch Christmas with my family. With my folks and what is everybody Dutch else. Christmas, and- what is Dutch Christmas uh, described as to you? Basically, regular Christmas, but on the on the fifth of December instead mm-hmm. of the twenty fifth. Yeah, its official right. title its official title in Dutch is uh, Sinterklaas. I think okay. it had a lot to do with Saint Nicholas. Yeah, it's December sixth in Germany. <clears throat> ah, yeah, yeah, neat. Saint Nicholas Day. Ate a bunch of chocolate. I do every year on that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So played some Mario Kart with my nephews and. They always enjoy that. And <laughs> my mom and dad actually gave them like remote control Mario and Yoshi from Mario Kart. So that was fun. Okay. Let's get into our topics then. Let's go. Play in the drop. Okay, farming is the theme. I already mentioned at the top of the podcast what made me choose it. I immediately have my next theme in mind for 2023 when it's my turn, uh, probably in February. <laughs> but uh-huh. yeah, I just uh, I simply wanted to try out a couple games that were also relaxing, didn't require a whole lot of I guess thought process to them. And honestly, there, there, it's it's a series that I've never dived into and wanted to at least give them a good try, and to okay. see if perhaps a later iteration is something I'd maybe pursue, if that's better. So that that was my kind of goal. Are these games going to be good enough to pique my interest for a later title? Have you ever kind of felt that way about maybe I'll try out some other game and then maybe that'll get me to try one later? You guys felt that way? Maybe, but I can't think of any examples off the top of my head. Yeah, I mean, I tried what Stardew Valley to see if I would like them and I did not like that game. Just like these games. So, spoiler alert, I failed them both. I <laughs> hate farming games. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate, yeah, I, I, like, for all intents and purposes, I think these are going to be pretty short reviews. Um, I do have a lot to say over the first one, not so much the second one we're going to go over. Uh, I gotta say, I, w- I would say the two games themselves, I was not impressed. What was your uh, oh, yeah. instinct, what was your instinct and feel for them, Colin? 
Well, for one of them I had talked about before, it was just not very clear on how to do certain things that are key to making the best of each game. Mm -hmm. Although this time around, I finally figured out what those were. So after that, I, I actually found myself wanting to play more. So I ended up being a little softer on that one. But yeah, uh, I, I've i played Stardew Valley myself and actually really liked it. I, I actually put like 96 hours into it. So obviously the other one we're doing is going to get a lot of comparisons. Yeah. So I'm actually going to switch up the order here. We're going to do the older one first since that's the, I guess, first of its kind kind of deal. Uh, the first okay. game is Harvest Moon. Okay. And Harvest Moon came out on the GameCube, also later on the PS2, I believe. Uh, September 12th, 2003, by Marvelous Interactive, uh, published by a host of different places. But uh, the point Wasn't is... It Natsume? I thought Natsume made Harvest Moon. In North America, not, not for um, Australia or Japan. Well, how's that possible? If they developed it, then who else could no, develop it? Marvelous the same Interactive way? developed it. Let me see this. I'm looking at it right now. Huh? Blow your mind, Joey. I think well, I see developer Amcacus. <laughs> I don't know. The whole Harvest Moon history is pretty confusing. All right. Well, anyways, Harvest Moon: A Wonderful Life. Again, 2003. Uh, I played the GameCube version. I think that's what a lot of people will default to in that aspect. Uh, it is, <laughs> you guessed it, a simulation game. Also a little RPG. You are this, um, what do they call them? Like Mukus or some shit? What, what, what's this tribe called? <laughs> I don't know. There was way too much text in the beginning. I just started spamming through it. Okay, so a lot of text. Basically, you're you're tasked with uh, growing crops, selling them, talking to a lot of people to develop a relationship, and eventually you will get married, have a kid, and you kind of repeat that process for a while. So is that a staple in farming games? Like, do you have to get married in them? Because it seems like every farm game, you find a wife. Uh, probably not Sim Farm. Uh, true. True. Yeah, you just drive tractors and uh, keep growing your farm, right? <laughs> I mean, I looked in getting the sim farm, but then I looked at all the shit you have to manage. I was like, it's just too much. <laughs> <laughs> just too much. It's just like way too many things for me to keep up with. Hmm. The biggest question of this game, did you go pointy ears or floppy? I went pointy. I think I played a different game. I played the original on Super Nintendo. Oh, <laughs> hey, you, didn't, you didn't specify a wonderful life. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> you didn't type it in on the sheet. I just thought maybe GC was a typo. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's Dude, amazing. You kind of have to specialize the or spe specify that because I didn't there, even know there was a shit. Super Nintendo game. That It's the yeah, original. The original. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you have to specify this shit with Harvest Moon. There's a shit ton of games out there. Oh, fantastic. I'm so happy <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> so what did you play? Like, uh, what, what is it? Mineral Town? Is that what it is? I forget. Or Story I... of Seasons or something? No, it's the very, very original. The very original, just Harvest Moon. In 97. That was made by Hamas. Am Ampkus. Yeah. Tell me about that game, Colin, please. I'm begging. Well, it plays very similar to Stardew Valley. I right. mean, I'm I gonna can't imagine it's that much different. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, hell, Harvest Moon was the biggest inspiration for Stardew Valley's gameplay. Although Stardew Valley is a lot more streamlined. Wikipedia says the story is exactly the same as the Harvest Moon of Wonderful Life, but a few differences. The protagonist <laughs> is female instead of male. Yes! The bachelors are Rock, Marlin, and Gustafa. So, apparently it's the same story. Excellent. Played the same game, just older. 
<laughs> More or less. <laughs> oh. Is this for Harvest Moon? Harvest Moon. Oh, another Wonderful Life. Sorry, I read that wrong. Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life, and another Wonderful Life for the same game, but just switched sexes, I guess. My bad. Oh, that part I knew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So what's the story? Like I said, said, there's a million different ones of these games, and the titles don't always... (laughs) aren't always consistent. (laughs) Yeah. I even went to, like, the... like, all the different Harvest Moon games, and I didn't even see A Wonderful Life show up on the list of Harvest Moon games I looked at. This is just confusing. They need to get their shit straight. <laughs> I think there's that. I think there's this, like a whole uh, Matt McMuscles video about it, <laughs> about Harvest Moon's confusing history. Oh, like are they the same line? Or are there like multiple different Harvest Moons, like Zeldas? Like, oh, you're in the Ganon line. Oh, you're in the future past sideways line. You're, uh, <laughs> you're in. You're. <laughs> You're in the timeline where the fertility of this soil does not <laughs> go as well as previous generations. <laughs> oh man, there is three different kinds of soils with different fertility in this game. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see I any of that. that. Found that out. Well, these games yeah. are like forty hours in general, so y- you know, I my bi- my okay, my simple takeaway of Harvest Moon this version. <laughs> that I played was it's a more boring, less interesting Animal Crossing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I felt like I got all the same things this game does in Animal Crossing without, like, the possible dating aspect. Gotcha. Yeah. Although I've never played any Animal Crossing games. Water the crops, grow this, sell this, Rinse, repeat, till the land. Not much. There's just not a lot of depth to 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 this Harvest Moon game. I felt. Yeah, and like I said, the front, the original Harvest Moon wasn't very streamlined. Like, you can only carry two items at a time, and the only way you can tell you have which item is by pressing one button, and then your character will hold up his hand, and then that uh, item will appear. So you got to make sure you have the the hoe and not the the seeds. Otherwise, you'll I always make sure I got the hoe. Of course, you do. Always. <laughs> uh, very proud of that one. Did you know the other game that you selected is a spinoff of Harvest Moon? Yes, I did know that one. By the same people, no less. There's 14 spinoff titles, and the other game is one of them. <laughs> This is just too much. So the Harvest Moon Colin played is a rare game on the Super Nintendo, and it goes for like four hundred dollars loose on the low end. Damn! Holy shit! The GameCube version, Joey. I you played the GameCube version, right? Yes. Okay. All right. We're both on that one. Uh, that is like twenty bucks. Ooh, there's a Wii. Harvest Moon Animal Parade. Don't think I'm playing that one. I just posted a link to There's the, a Harvest the Moon 64? Man, yes. was I out to lunch on picking this game. I well, yeah, at least I at least I picked GameCube like put GameCube there, so maybe maybe that made it a little less confusing. Well, why didn't you do the PlayStation one? What? We could have we could have gone back to nature. Wow. My har- I'm so I apologize. My Harvest Moon knowledge uh, it clearly is not uh, not good enough, <laughs> and that's why I just posted a video link in the in <laughs> our chat. All right, what is this link called for the listeners? It's Harvest Moon: What Happened by Matt McMuscles. Okay. <laughs> so let me get this straight. I am critical of this game, saying there's not a lot of depth, and I wish there was more, and it feels like a less Animal Crossing. And there's like seven games before this. Apparently so. Fail. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it, I didn't like this game, and especially like when he talked to the the guy that gives you the tour the first time. He's like, "It's none of my business, but you should find a wife." Okay, cool, dude. Just start it working, but <laughs> be right on that. <laughs> Look, uh-huh. man, I got shrubs to grow and weeds to pick. Get out of here. <laughs> 
I got a cow. I got to milk at least twice a day, apparently. Okay. I'm busy. Did you? Oh my God. So that fucker stopped producing milk. And I'm like, why did you stop producing milk? I look it up and I have to make this cow have sex. What? Yes. <laughs> I thought you just had to pet him. No. You have to impregnate this thing. Oh my God. <laughs> Played long enough? <laughs> I didn't even play that long, so I just milked it once and then I ran around yeah, town. Yeah, like, yeah, it was like after yeah. 45 days or something. And I'm just sitting there going, I need milk. Hello. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Colin, pass or fail? Yeah, I'll, I'll fail it. Well, yeah. then again, I played a different game from you. I don't care. <laughs> More of a soft fail. <laughs> I mean, it was the first of its kind, so I can't be too hard on it. Yes, you can. <laughs> you certainly can. But I won't. Ah, oh, okay. The next game is Rune Factory, a fantasy Harvest Moon. It is a spinoff of the Harvest Moon story of season games. I knew this part. It is developed by Neverland, uh, published by Natsumi and Marvelous Interactive, so they're back for more. Came out in August of 2007, so just 15 years old. How about that? Or uh -huh. Japan, August 2006. Take your pick. Fantasy Farm Simulation Game. Uh, let's see. They, I think they remade this one. But the point is, there's like Room Factory 4 or 5 coming out soon. And that's where this stemmed from. Uh, the game, there's, there's an actual, like, trying to do an in-depth plot here in this one, so I shall read accordingly. The game takes place in Cardia, a small city on the eastern tip of Andonia, Adonia continent, which is surrounded by farmland. The game opens with the protagonist, Raguna, wandering into town, uh, starved and dehydrated. He collapses in front of the house of a land tower named Mist. Raguna suffers from amnesia, because of course... Why would you not? That old chestnut. Yeah, that old chestnut. Probably an orphan with dead parents. Uh -huh. Has no idea where he is, where he came from. Miss discovers him outside her home, fetches him food and water, and because he does not know his name, they both decide, and Ragina afterwards, blah, blah, blah. From then on, the game is very open-ended. Because uh, he's uh, promised to work on the farm to get back. Player works on the uh -huh. farm, fish, <laughs> explore caves in the wilderness around Cardia. The player can... Propose to some of the eligible girls in town. Capture monsters, which gets in your party. Very helpful. Uh, so much like monster... Um, mo uh, monsters... That's... What, what am I thinking of, Colin? Uh, the only monsters thing I can think of is like... Well, just like Dragon Quest. Like... Where you can... Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I was going to say like... Pokemon, but Dragon Quest makes more yeah. sense. I so there's we... um Girl. eight there's eight caves in general, and what you're meant to do is cultivate your land, get permission to go into a cave to get like more crops that are in the cave. You cultivate the cave and you beat the boss at the end of the cave. However, there's a caveat to a lot of this because it sounds simple enough, seems pretty open ended. Yeah, the game is so what's the word? Extended? Padded. In, it's padded. Involved. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's padded. Where... I did not hear that. Uh, you have to till a hundred plots of land before you can go into the first cave. Then you have to plot, like, the entire cave before you can go on to the next one. So it's extremely overly time consuming. Yeah. And then the, I, I think the biggest negative I had with the game was the difference in HP and RP, which is, I guess you're just health and stamina. Yeah. So you lose stamina doing your mundane tasks, which are overly padded. Uh -huh. You can't gain back your stamina until you plot a certain crop in a cave, I believe. Yeah, like, and then it has to fully grow. And then it has to fully grow. It's a pain in the ass. You only get so many. And then once you run out of stamina, anything you do depletes your health until you pass out and die. Um, yeah. I quit when this happened. You ready for this? I played for Go like for 
three, four hours. I was cultivating the cave, ran out of little stamina plants. I was like, okay, I'll just beat the boss and then I'll be fine. Well, the hit detection is like atrocious. I don't know if you guys noticed this throughout the game. Like just in general. I noticed it on the first enemy that I'd wait for him to get up before I could hit him again. I just wanted to use that hoe while he was down and kill him. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. (laughs) I agree with that strat. Well, so you're attacking, you lose your health, and then uh, you pass out, okay? You don't, like, start in the cave. You go until you beat the first cave in general. If you die, the whole game starts over. Go back to the title screen. Lose all your progress. So I quit. (laughs) (laughs) There was just too many things that were not, I can't even say perfected. They clearly had ideas of what they wanted the game to eventually be. But whether it was, I don't know, investment in the development, uh, not enough advertisements, maybe even not enough developers themselves helping with the game. There's just yeah. so much just not fleshed out that it makes the game very irritating, I guess would be a better word. And tedious. the padding was just overly done. I guess now, tedious makes more sense. Tedious, that's yeah. the better word, that's yes. Very, very overly tedious. tedious with no guarantee of satisfaction. Yeah. And I'm thinking about it going, I like all the concepts of this game. It takes everything from Harvest Moon of that uh, content of the farming aspect. It gives you a purpose to farming that. And then it gives you purpose to progressing through the game through the use of dungeon crawling. All good ideas. I liked all that. It's just everything else mechanically doesn't work. So I assume now, now that there's like 10 more of these games, they ironed this out. Yeah. To make it more I mean, manageable. And clearly. I mean, at the very the least. Go on. At the very least, Stardew Valley did a good job with it. Is there dungeon crawling in Stardew Valley? Yes. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I remember talking about this game before, and this game desperately needs a better tutorial. Oh, it's horrible. Some... You don't know what you're doing. I had to look it up on my own. Yeah, me too. And even when I was looking it up, it was hard to find the information I needed. Like, I, I didn't realize I had to till 50 plots of of uh, soil in a dungeon before I could even get a hammer. And even then, you can't use it to mine anything. Nope. All you can do is smash rocks. Everything is just stunting progress at all points. Yeah. Uh, and I yeah, did, it, it a took me for and it took me forever to finally get a fucking sword. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't know how to do that either. But turns out you just buy one from the tool shop. Yeah, and how do you get and, that? It's a lot of plotting of land and going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, I think that one of the things that's <laughs> that might seem small to some people, but re- annoyed me the most was that. Why can't I see how much money I have outside of his shop? Although later on, I figured out, <laughs> I finally figured out where I can view my money in the menu. It's in the fourth tab in the pause menu labeled Mist Farm. It's like, why the hell do I have to make such an effort just to find out how much money I have? I'm I mean, telling this... you, everything in this game was just not polished. <laughs> Yeah, I've never seen another game do that. It just really grinds my gears. Yeah, I think this game is like it should be seven hours long, but they made it 37 hours long. Yeah, really? How much does Rune Factory go for? Let's see. Rune Factory. I'm very curious if like Rune Factory 4 or 5 is so much more polished and got better reviews. I wonder. I hope so. Rune Factory 1 on the Nintendo DS. Uh, 
Here we go. $33. I would say that's not worth it. Yeah, I forget how much I paid for my copy. I remember getting it at Fan Expo. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can get other Rune Factories that are probably better than this uh, for the same price or less. Yeah, I think I think Rune Factory Four is on is on Switch. Aren't isn't is that the one they're remaking, or is Five coming out, or did Five come out and they're remaking that, and Six is coming out? <laughs> yeah, I think Four got remade for the Switch. Okay, probably that then. Let me look it up. Because I remember seeing Rune Factory Four in the the Switch lineup. It's actually in my wish list just for just for kicks. Oh yeah, it says an enhanced version titled Rune Factory 4 Special was released on the Switch in 2019. So if anybody's interested in that, there it is. Joey, what did you think? What's your verdict? <laughs> I played all of like 20 minutes of this. Hell yeah. <laughs> You played and the I right thought, one, though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I thought okay. it was weird that, like, that guy and girl randomly showed up the first after the first time you sleep, and they just walk into your house, and you're like, cool, cool. And then they leave without any explanation. Just Why would weird. they have an explanation? Why would they be in my fucking house? Probably to steal your shit like you do for everyone else's stuff. <laughs> Fair. Fair. But I also thought... It, the main character was a girl. I didn't know I was playing a dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Uh, did you just assume their gender? No. I just knew the gender was, <laughs> but I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I saw, I, I saw a uh, guy come out of the women's bathroom at the bowling alley last night. And uh, there's two women that just go, did you just use the women's bathroom? And you're a guy? And he just, his response was, did you just assume my gender? <laughs> of course. He was totally joking. And uh, <laughs> it definitely laughed. <laughs> it's just really funny. how he's, It's like straight faced. Just went, um, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I fail this one too. Yeah, I, I can't. I guess I give it a, a fail too, given how frustrating it was to start. But to its credit, once I actually had figured out all of that stuff, it started being more interested in playing further. But it shouldn't take that fucking long and that much fucking energy. I would say Rune Factory and Harvest Moon did their job in getting me curious enough to play, we'll say, for the sake, Rune Factory 4. I believe yeah, I, I believe that's a much better game and polished and something worth pursuing. So in that aspect, it passed the goal I had in mind and why I chose this theme. Yeah, and... <laughs> Funnily enough, Stardew Valley was what got me interested in trying out Rune Factory 1 to begin with, because that was also an influence. All right. So the two games were Harvest Moon and Rune Factory. I gave them both a D. I guess I looked, liked Rune Factory a little bit more. It just had more to it. That's about it. I also gave them both a D. But I liked Harvest Moon just a little bit more, but they both sucked. <laughs> Colin, I actually gave them both low C's, but I like—I guess I like Rune Factory a little better. All right, so we're all kind of in the same ballpark. <laughs> yeah. Wow, uh, that was bad. That was a bad theme down the year. <laughs> that was two bad <laughs> games. Well, I'll—I'll I'll choose something a little better for the next year. Uh, not quite as uh, good as Joey's girl power theme from May, where Barbie got a D and Princess Minerva got a C. Uh, yeah, sorry, farming's not as good as girl power. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh boy! So yeah, that uh, that that's our that's our last episode of the year. 
Um, we'll come back probably, I would say probably around mid January. That's what I, that's where I put it mid January. And that will be, uh, Colin's pick. And we'll even do as a starting topic, our retro game of the year from 2022 that we covered. Okay. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do the full tier list this time. We'll just kind of have our, uh, we'll just go through our top three games that we played uh, for the podcast for 2022. We'll keep it simple. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sure. All right, guys. See you next time. See you next year. Bye. See you next year. Bye.